In this chapter, we will try to understand how to handle device orientation. So, before diving into orientation, let's have a small example. I have a simple GUI here with a button and a text view, and this text view will display the number of clicks on the button. Quite simple application. And I click four times in the button, and then I decide to have an orientation of my device from portrait to landscape. When I do that, the text is updated to zero. So we have troubles here. We have to understand why we have troubles here. In the previous video, I show you how to manage the life cycle of your activity, but I missed something. And the something I missed is when you perform a rotation, your application is destroyed and rebuilt. It means that while iOS reorder your elements, Android decided to rebuild your application. Why is this shoes has been done? First of all, because you can change the configuration of your device only by displaying your screen on another screen. So with different characteristics, with different uh, ratio, and so on. So this, is, this may be complicated to re recalculate the, the different position and so on. The second idea is that we can define static view for landscape and portrait. And we are not sure that in the two configuration, the elements are still present. We may have completely different elements in both uh, views. So we have to rebuild uh, the whole application. So now that we understand that, we have to find a way to handle this. So the first idea is what I just said. We can fix the orientation of the activity and say, OK, so I, I will only authorize landscape activity. This is the technique used for games, where you cannot rotate your screen as you want. But it does not solve our problem. We can also define views for portrait and landscape, but it does, it does not solve our problem. So we have to find another way to do that. An idea could be to detect a rotation. When detecting a rotation, we could write into a file the important values. And then when we, our application will be relaunched, we can load this file and find our data. So how we can do that? We can do that by handle configuration inside of the Android manifest.xml. So here we, we, we will require some special permissions, which is, hey, say me when, uh, when I'm rotating, OK? And then I have to overload on configuration change method to do something. If I'm portrait, I do that. If I'm landscape, I do that. We have to manage it by hand. It's quite a pain. So Android provides another, um, another concept, the concept of bundle. OK, the concept of bundle is the following. When your application is about to be restarted, the bundle will be built, and you can add some data inside of this bundle. And the life cycle of your bundle is enough. So you, when you will load, load this bundle after your application has been restarted, you will have access to your value. OK? So you have a bundle. You can put extra information inside of this bundle. And with this extra information, when your application will be recreated, you will be able to load data from this bundle. 
Okay? So how to use this bundle? This bundle is only an associative key values uh, bun uh, map uh, with heter heterogeneous value. Uh, you have to put the information inside of the bundle during the on save instance uh, method. So just before the rotation. And when your application is rebuilt, there is a method called on restore instance uh, method, with, which will be called. And then you can grab the information you saved. OK. You can also note that the bundle is also passed to the on create um, method. So you can also reload your data from the on create method. OK. So here is a small example of your of how to to save some values. The method on save instance state will put an int inside of the bundle, which is called here saved instance state. So I fix a key, number of click, and then I fix a local value which is nb click. And to restore the saved values, I only have to define to override on restore instance state with the bundle, and then I can get the number of clicks I saved earlier. We can also note that uh, this, this bundle can position a uh, default value if the, the value was not previously saved. OK? You can also uh, grab, load the value from the onCreate uh, method, as I just said. But in this case, you have to ensure that your bundle is not null. Your bundle will be not null only during a rotation. Otherwise, the bundle is null. So you have to check whether this bundle is null, and then to grab the, the value, to load the value. OK? So you may prefer to use on restore instance state, but sometimes you have few value to, to grab, and you can do it on the on create uh, method. So in this bundle, you can put all primitives uh, you want. So integer, strings, char, byte, and so on. But sometimes you have to, to save more complex values. For instance, a more complex value could be a person, age, name, first name, and so on. And to do that, we have to implement the parcelable interface. So the parcelable interface helps to serialize objects. It means that we'll find a way to describe our object so that they can be handled by uh, the bundle. So, Parcelable objects requires to implement a few methods. The first one is write to parcel, which means serialize the object. And you have to fix two parameters. The first one is out, which will be the parcel, the serialization uh, you have to fill, and the flag, which is a set of values uh, for uh, option of serialization. The, first, the second one is a constructor which take a parcel and is, which is able to unserialize the object from this parcel. The third method is describe content, which is useless unless you want to uh, serialize and deserialize um, file descriptors. And finally, you have to define the creator. I will, I will talk of that later. So let's take a complex thing, a student. Uh, let's say that we can. We want to transform this student into a student parcelable, which means a serializable, a serializable uh, student. So a student has only two fields, which is name and grade. So we have a simple constructor, which is independent of the parcelable interface. Now, since we implement parcelable, we want to define a constructor which is 
able to be built through a parcel. So here the parcel is called in, and we only grab the grade of the students by saying in dot readint and name which is equal to in dot read string. So this means that now we have an order to define. Okay? We define that the first int was the grade and the rest of the the bytes were the name of the student. Okay? So when we want to write a student to a parcel, we have to respect this order. So here we can see that the parcel we have to write something in is out. So we can say out dot write int grade, the grade first, and then the name. Okay? So the, f the, the constructor can read from a parcel and we are able to write a student into a parcel. Okay, we have two concepts. And now we have to define two more uh, methods. The first one is describe contents, which is used here. And the second one is more complex. <coughs> but allows to build an array of students and to save an array of students. So we have to define a creator which will be able to return students uh, from a parcel and to save an array of, par of students. So now that we have parcelable objects, we want to save this object inside of the bundle. It's simple. We have a method which is called uh, not put int, but put parcelable here. Uh, so we can just write save instance state dot put parcelable student student. And on the onCreate method, we just check if save instance state is different of null, and then we can get parcelable student. So the key will find the parcelable object that we serialized and return uh, the student. Otherwise, if the bundle is null, it means that this is the first launch of our application. And so we have to build a new student. And here we build a student called Etienne with grade 0. OK? So to sum up, uh, you have to deal with uh, the orientation problem. It means that you have to fix the orientation of your device or to use dedicated view or to handle configuration changes or to use the bundle. The, the, the best technique is to use the bundle. So prefer the bundle over the other, um, the other techniques. The bundle is only a temporary storage. So you cannot assume that your bundle will be available for the whole lifetime of your application. You have to use it on the, during the onCreate method. And you can put anything you want inside of your uh, bundle as long as it's implemented parcelable.